Hey guys, welcome to another Tuesday edition of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick, and uh, today I'm going to talk about, it looks like about seven new albums that are going to be uh, coming out this Friday. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on the link down below and go check out the uh, Vinyl Den Facebook group. It's just a growing community where we kind of continue this music conversation. Um, also, make sure you give the episode a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and uh, make sure you also go check out the Vinyl Den uh, Patreon page also. So the first one up is one that I probably won't pick up, but I thought it was kind of interesting. I know some people will probably get into it also. This, this is David Bowie. This is uh, the man who sold the world. It's a picture disc. Uh, I, I found it kind of interesting because they're not using any of the, the the standard artwork. They're actually using the the um, the artwork from the '72 reissue. So it's just like obviously you can see what the, what it looks like. So it's not like the the normal uh, artwork that you see for that album. No, no, it's a it is a really good album. It's probably one of my favorite uh, Bowie albums. But uh, you know, I'm just not a huge fan of picture discs, so it's probably one I'll pass on. The next one, though, is one that I know a bunch of people are going to be interested uh, for, uh, interested to pick up, and uh, something that they've been looking for for a while. It was actually a, uh, this was originally a Record Store Day release from last year. This is Fountains of Wayne. This is uh, Welcome Interstate Managers. And uh, it's not it's not a bad price. going for $35.99 on, uh, on Amazon. I don't think I mentioned it, but that, that Bowie album is going for 23 bucks, so it's not too bad uh, if you are a fan of picture discs. But anyway, this Fountain's Wayne album, it's one of their more popular albums. This is the one that's got uh, Stacy's Mom on it. It's the big track off of this. Like I said, this was a, a Record Store Day release last year, and it, uh, it sold pretty quick. I know there's a lot of people that were looking for it and, uh, and end up missing out on it. So this is kind of their opportunity to, uh, to pick up a copy of it. The next one is one that I'll definitely try to track down. This is uh, Green Day's Nimrod. This is an album that I've loved for a long time, ever since it came out back in the 90s. I actually have an older pressing. I got a 2009 pressing of this. Uh, this one is actually different because this is, I think, the um, a reissue of the 20th anniversary, which was a, it came on two LPs, but it was three sides, and I believe there was an etching on the on the fourth side. Uh, this is going for, it's not a bad price either. This is going for about 23 bucks on Amazon. Um, you know, so if I can track down a copy in the store, I'll, I'll definitely pick one up cause it's, uh, I'd rather have it on that, on that double LP just cause it's a little more spaced out. Uh, you know, you tend to get a little bit better sound quality, uh, when, the, when the tracks are spaced out a little bit more like that. Cause they're a little crunched together on a, on a single LP. Even when, when I bought it, I, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it cause I thought it was a little too long to be on one LP, but, uh, so this one should be definitely a, a good one to pick up one that I'll try to track down. I know the... A lot of the 20th anniversary pressings were yellow, too, so I'm not sure if this is going to be yellow or if this is going to be black, but uh, either way, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll, I'll definitely try to pick one up. I think Ian ha actually has the, the yellow 20th anniversary version, but um, the next one is one that uh, I'm, I, I'm not a huge fan of soundtracks, but um, I remember watching this movie, So I, and I think this is actually a pretty cool packaging that they put together. This is the, the soundtrack for the movie, the, the horror movie, The Gate. Um, this is, I think this is the first time it's actually ever on vinyl. So if you're a big soundtrack fan, if you're a big horror movie fan, uh, that'd definitely be a good one to pick up. It says that there's a pop-up inside, but I haven't seen any kind of pictures of what that exactly means. Um, you know, when I think pop-up, I think of the Jethro Tull stand-up album from, was it, 69? Where, you know, you open it up and, like, the, the band stands up on the inside of it. Uh, so I don't know if it's a pop-up like that or what exactly that means, but uh, it, there, there's 27 tracks crammed together on one LP. Now, granted, this is a soundtrack. It's more of the music from the movie, so there's a lot shorter. You know, it's not like a full-length uh, uh, song or anything like that that they're cramming on there. So, like I said, if you're a fan of the movie, you're a fan of horror movies, that should be definitely a good one to pick up. Because, like I said, the packaging looks pretty sweet on this thing. So the next one is Riot by Paramore. This was an album that, I'm not a huge Paramore fan, but it's actually a pretty decent album. Probably one of their better albums, I think. But uh, this was originally released in 2007. It's being reissued as part of Fueled by Rama's 25th anniversary series that they're doing this year. You know, just to commemorate the, the anniversary of the label, they're releasing an album each month. And this one, this month, obviously, it's it's the Paramore release. And this is going to be on uh, Silver Vinyl, just like all the other releases have been. So this should be a really good one to pick up if you're a Paramore more fan it's not going to break the bank either it's going to run you 20 bucks on amazon so uh should be a, a good one the next one is one that uh i've been waiting for for several months now ever since it was uh 
originally put out for pre-order probably you know uh, I, I think it was like january january february something like that i i, I pre-ordered this but this is a taylor swift evermore i'm I haven't been like a huge Taylor Swift fan, even though I do have most of her albums and I have been a fan of hers since she started. Um, you know, I, there was a couple of albums there where I wasn't, you know, when, when she got in a little bit more of the popular stuff that I kind of lost a little interest in it. And then Folklore came out and it was probably one of my favorite albums of last year. I think when Ian and I did our video on our top three albums of 2020, it was definitely in my top three. So Evermore is like the, this is the sister album to Folklore. You can still actually get this on Amazon. It's going to run you about 23 bucks. I think it's, uh, I think I paid more than that when I pre-ordered it through uh, Taylor Swift's website. But anyway, it's going to be released on green vinyl. Um, you know, and it's a really good album. I don't think it's as good as, as Folklore, but it's definitely, I think definitely one of her, her better albums. So the last one is one that I'm definitely interested in. I'll probably stream it before I uh, pull the trigger on. And it's actually uh, one that came up on the Vinyl Den Facebook group just recently also. And I've never, never actually known this thing even existed. I'm not sure if this is just a reissue of something that's been released before. Because like I said, I've, I've never checked it out before. But this is, if you guys watch the channel for a while, you know I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan. This is a, a group of artists got together and this is called, uh, it's a Pink Floyd tribute. It's called Still Wish You Were Here. Um, you know, it's not your standard kind of, uh, cover album. This, uh, group of artists got together and re-recorded the band's 1975 masterpiece, Wish You Were Here. And Wish You Were Here is probably one of my, it's definitely my top two or three albums from Pink Floyd. So, um, like I said, it's one that I, I, I get kind of picky when it comes to covers, especially when it comes to Pink Floyd covers. So, uh, like I said, that's, I'll definitely check that one out before I buy it. But there's actually a really good list of artists that are on this album. You've got uh, Rick Wakeman's on here, Todd Rundgren's on here, uh, Jeff Tate from Queensryche uh, is on there, Joe Saturani, Bootsy, uh, Bootsy Collins. So, like I said, just, just a, a big, long list. Uh, if you go online, I'll, I'll see if I can find a list and put a picture up of the uh, the list of artists on this. But uh, like I said, if you're a big point, uh, Pink Floyd fan uh, or a big fan of that album, this should definitely be one to at least check out and stream before you uh, go out and, and try to hunt down a copy of it. Well, that's all I got for you this week, guys. Thanks for checking the show. You know, it's not a huge uh, release week, at least for me. There's uh, definitely, I'd say, two. There's definitely two albums I'll pick up. Uh, maybe another couple that uh, I'll stream and check out first, uh, before I decide to, to drop any money on it. But like I said, on most of these releases, a lot of them are around the $20, $25 range. So, uh, it's nice to finally have a week where I'm not talking about, you know, 60, 70, $80 albums, but, um, you know, definitely some good ones coming out. If there's others that I missed, make sure you drop a comment down below and let me know. Uh, cause I know every week I'm missing something on this list, but, uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. And, uh, that's about it until next time. Keep on spinning. Peace. <laughs>